everyone. I just raced out to the center to, uh, to hang out at this little museum in the background. But it doesn't look very open, so I hope my friend gets here quickly so we can figure this one out. Or at least check out the market. Yeah. What is happening? Well, It's 120. Gave him a tenner. He said, uh, "Here's uh, 880," and then he gave me 860. <laughs> I totally caught him, but he's selling ice cream in winter, so. Okay, that's fresh. That's fresh. Okay, that's fresh. It's been a very busy week, you guys. It's been a very, very exciting and busy week. In case you haven't been following these videos for a while, my name is Jean, and every week I show people with what's been happening in my sketchbook, what's been going on here in Barcelona. Last week I had a little trip down south. So if you haven't seen last week's video, I had a, a nice little trip to Alicante. Checked out some museums, got some art done, and had plenty of really good food. This week, I'd like to say it's no different except for the sun, but it was a nice balmy 26 degrees over there. We're kind of stuck in winter right now. It's the coldest it's been so far, but that didn't stop us from checking out some museums last weekend. I have a, a friend from Amsterdam over for the weekend, for the month I should say, but we finally got to meet up and uh, we checked out that museum where there was an exhibit on some of the Americans who were over here during the Civil War fighting the government, the dictator in waiting. Well, that didn't go too well, but it made for some, uh, some great video, some great paintings, I should say. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of an eye opener because I, I only know so much about that particular history uh, when so many people from outside came to fight in the Spanish Civil War, most notably Hemingway, of course, but there's many others, uh, the Battle of Guernica, of course. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool catching up. And then there was all the beers. Ooh, I put a stop to my Sunday. <laughs> no complaints though. Well, maybe just talking about it. This past week, as I'm uh, showing you what's been happening here in my sketchbook, has shown a, a different, has brought me back to uh, Phosphor, my little sci-fi space adventure comic, from a different angle. I've been I've been working on my comic book in the last month on and off, uh, mainly by drawing one panel at a time, um, like layouts, uh, designs, backgrounds, new characters, the works, and instead of attempting whole comic book pages, I figured if I just make lots and lots of single scenes then eventually I can see where the story is going and like try out different things very quickly because it'll be rough painted in Photoshop. But I can also put these scenes uh, as thumbnails together very quickly on a page to kind of, you know, work on my layouts in that way. Uh, so I've been, I've been keeping that up, but then this week, um, yeah, that different angle came from an unexpected quarter because one of my coworkers has been very busy writing a book. And so she's been writing this book about, um, I don't even want to, let's say it's about a coven 
and it's about witches and gods and the works. And she's been writing this little, um, this little tale during work. And so she's been asking some of us for feedback and read it. And so I dug in. And so it's, it's, quite, it's been quite an undertaking. So the thing I'm trying to do for her is what some of you have done for me, which is provide, you know, constructive criticism and feedback while, of course, not trying to discourage um, pointing out all the things that might not be working. And, um, and so that editing, because that's kind of how I see it, like, I think that's kind of what an editor does you now, like point out all the contradictions and like give suggestions on like how to circumvent the contradictions or uh, scenes that are missing possibly depending on you know what the the actual plan is that of course I don't know because I'm simply reading it um, so so all this building an argument for like how the story comes across to me and what I think is right and what I think is missing and suggestions on how to improve has been taken up quite a, quite a few evenings because it's 200 pages and, uh, and just like to, to formulate my thoughts. And um, that of course then, while I was at work, led me to look at my own comic book. And so I brought the, is it still here? No, it's in my bag. I brought my uh, my phosphor comic with me that um, Samurai Ox was kind enough to actually print off for me, and um, so I've been having a read, and I was looking at the panels I've been designing, like the, the single panels in December, and over two days I laid out the whole start of the story um, up until. Like I, I'd say about fifteen pages. All new. Uh, well, all new as in like all new layouts because a lot of the images that I've been making in December and that are in the comic already, I've simply you know, like Lego, moved them around. It's always so much easier to to criticize and like to to see what is what works and what doesn't with someone else's work, and it's not always so easy seeing it in your own project that you're of course very passionate about, or that you've been daydreaming about for so long so you know all the background story but that's not actually on the page or is it um and so with those critiques in mind um all of a sudden what i had to do to introduce characters and just build it up step by step um, i feel i easily have another 15 pages in me like i really feel like all of a sudden it's like oh that was really easy that was clear like I get it, like I see why this didn't work. Um, and I see what needs to be done and I don't have that. And since I can so easily suggest for her, I'm, I'm writing that down, like maybe you need a scene like this here because that would really explain all of this there, you know? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, been a, it's been an unusual angle to get back at my own story um, through someone else's writing, you know? And like that switch to like an editing mode, if you will. So yeah, it's kind of what I've been up to uh, this week. So um, the sketches you've been watching me make are, well, while I'm at work, I try and keep myself busy. Usually this is drawing people or in the news. But uh, this time with my comic book available, I just decided to have a go drawing some of the characters because I, uh, you know, there's, there's room for improvement and I feel like I've improved, so I want that to be in the next version. Um, but here I, I decided to draw the same guy and make different versions of him and like have different goes at the line art and just play a little bit, a little bit more with his uh, features and the clothing and how I will draw the dreads. You know, it was just, it's sketchbook time. Just try out different stuff. So that's kind of what I'm, uh, what you, been watching me do here. I really like that crease in his forehead, by the way. It's just some way it came about that I really enjoy. In the same way, I really quite enjoy just these random shapes for the dreads or just in general, actually. I've just been playing around a lot more with like triangles and just black shapes, building up the bigger shape without um, rendering in the sense of 
uh, parallel lines, cross hatching to shade. Just a little something I've been uh, I've noticed myself doing. So this is a very special week. You've heard me talk about the Kickstarter for the Life in Space comic book anthology coming your way for quite some time now as we were readying things behind the scenes. Mike, Chris, and Marshall, uh, they had the reins and they've been working very hard making sure that everything is smooth sailing for the rest of us, but it is finally here. Last Thursday it kicked off and, uh, well, let me just explain just in case you haven't heard fully. We made this little animation for you. So the thing right here is it is a comic book made by 20 artists. Um, about 16 of which made a six-page comic book each with the central theme being life in space. So everyone got to make up, you know, let their imaginations run wild and uh, make up their own little thing. Mine is a history lesson from the future. Uh, takes into account like a couple of hundred years of us venturing out into space. And yeah, I had a lot of fun uh, working on that last year. Uh, I learned a lot as the comic book because I decided to go all traditional, whereas my Phosphor Issue Zero was mostly digital. Um, I really feel like it took my art like to like a next level by then taking traditional pen and inks on a big piece of paper and then scanning that in and then adding gray tones uh, in Photoshop. So I'm looking forward to everyone getting it uh, in their hands. And if you haven't pledged yet, well, there's going to be a link down below. But I am pleased to say that um, I figured we'd do okay because there's 20 artists involved. So I figured we'd do okay. But to, to see us reach our goals, like the initial like bare minimum to get published in within like a day and a half was still incredibly heartwarming and made me feel very proud being part of this community. And... Uh, taking part in this book. So be sure to follow down the link down below so you get to see what everyone else has been up to. You've seen my art in the past year that I've made for the uh, for my six pager. And I'll be sure to post some more videos like in the next coming weeks to to just, you know, add to the uh, the little push we're making here on, on YouTube as some have actually started their 100 days of making comics round two and three and sometimes even five. So there's quite a number of the people who are in the book and who are not in the book who are starting a 100 days of making comics like right this week. And I'm trying to collect like little YouTube links here and there to post them all down below as well. So in case you're new to this whole challenge of the V100s uh, community that was started by Kevin Cross, it's finding a little bit of time every day to work on your own personal comic book project. That's how I got started uh, and ultimately end up as part of the book. And uh, who knows where it might take you. So if, you, if you'd like to check out what other people are doing uh, right now, there's a very big diversity of arts and styles and comic book stories and people. So it's a lot of fun. So um, yeah, check them out. So I figured I was doing a lot of talking about making thumbnails, but I didn't actually show you anything. So, um, so these are just, be quiet now, some of the um, thumbs I'm working on. This is a new page 17. So, one of the problems I had on this one right here is, so clearly there's um, two people in charge, they're pondering. 
this is their ponder faces and then i thought like because uh the lady over here is kind of a go in between so to kind of put her right in the middle over here like maybe on top of these two panels uh would make a nice little visual storytelling you know like without having to say anything you know that that's what she is she's the go between she's in between the two levels so to speak this is her going through the gate but then i also thought like well that's kind of a like after all these pages where the stuff is actually happening like maybe this could be a little breather like you know like a pinup almost but then i also thought well that's kind of boring like shouldn't i continue the story like this is cool but then continue the story thought maybe mix it up so instead of the lady something completely different and then a shot of the environment which i only had is that actually on this page oh, yeah it's on this page there's only a glimpse of the uh, the outside environment right here after a glimpse um, let's see, is it, so there's actually, is that actually legible for you guys i don't even know there's more more thumbnails there's one of the first pages Oh yeah, tiny, tiny. Uh, from the, the top view, I've rearranged, well, now that I'm on this page anyway. This is kind of how I started off a couple of days ago, like organizing my thoughts. I thought like, okay, so I've got, I've got these different groups. And then I thought, like, okay, well, I need to reorganize that. Okay, so like on top, outside, the wanderer, the crew outside, the quarters for the management team and the kids. And then I thought, well, I could just do a page like that, but like, that's not how I want to tell the story. So starting, starting over from over here, I cut out all the stuff about her uh, actually waking up, like getting out of bed. And it just starts at the start of her work day. Uh, she's kind of like a supervisor person for this crew on this uh, sci-fi vehicle that is uh, scavenging uh, this wasteland. So she goes around waking everyone up. So instead of a whole scene of like waking up the kids, literally just coming through the curtains, hello, waking up, come outside, done. I think I, think I can cut that down. But then instead of some of the scenes I had uh, single panel shots, I started messing around with them a little bit. So instead of her walking up to this, getting onto this platform to get to their uh, sleeping quarters, um, she's already here and she uses that platform to actually go up in the vessel. So that gives me the excuse to, to have like this big bird's eye view of uh, where the kids uh, live and then possibly work over here um, but also instead of like what I was doing here and here um, the beginning of a working day on this vessel then starts from the bottom to the top these are the people on the bottom of the food chain they're on the bottom of the ship and then she clearly makes her way up to the guy in charge of them the taskmaster and then, you know, I get to have a whole page of them talking and introducing each other and what, what it is they do and what that means. And then she goes further up because she has to hand over, you know, like the task of the day to the upper management, like to sign off on it, so to speak. Like this really massive, again, like massive staircase to show off the size of this vessel. And like, you know, that there's all this stuff just being piled up that they're collecting. So once she's on top, um, so she arrives there, so she's the person walking in the door rather than someone else, uh, as it was in the original comic book. I hope I can just grab that and insert that right now. Um, hands that over, so she's really this go-between. Uh, but I also, having this then shows off the vast difference between the top, top of the vessel the people in charge and the ones on the bottom. So there's lots of uh, chit chat between the crew that is hanging out in this lounge. Just a couple of characters, just like I did in my original issue zero. 
And then I thought, I figured I could do that in about two thirds of a page. Um, but then the last panel is going to be looking in on their conversation from the top of the ship. So I just made up that there would be a window pane, you know, like a, a ceiling light. Now, what do you call that? Sky window, sky something. Anyway, so maybe there's something damaged here. And so they're fixing that up. You zoom out and there's the two crew members who are the fix it guys and gals. Uh, so they're fixing that window. And so again, like I go another level up. And so you've seen glimpses of every area uh, of the vessel and the people who do their jobs there. So let's go back over here. And then they have to get to work. Which I think, where is that page? It's over here, actually. Lots of more, lots more thumbnails. Well, this is this is getting really, really tiny. With uh, lots of explaining. Um, this was actually not an issue zero. This was in like other stuff I did in the last couple of months. But whereas I was trying to put that this all on as few pages as possible, and just really cram it in. This still looks crammed in. This was originally on, I think like a page and a half, and now I'm really just trying to expand on it. And instead of finishing it up, that the whole, like what it is they actually do, the fact that different people down there have different jobs, um, like showing off of authority, showing off a little bit of a mystery, is all now spread across three pages, four pages, this is like where the one of the kids has run off and he's basically shown like the door and the glimpse outside like look there's nowhere to run you can't get off this vessel just kind of their plight um and whereas before i thought i had enough of a mystery showing a cool inside of a skull with uh, some circuitry uh now it just came natural to me that well of course the guy who snatched it away from them um, is going to have a, a closer look on it and the whole backstory I have of him that he originally was somewhat of a, an archaeologist if you will uh, so he's now going to look at some maps and some other artifacts that he has and compare them <clears throat> so I don't even have to say much here except that he's clearly very intrigued by it and very knowledgeable and has a private study that overlooks uh, where the kids are working. And this is where the kid who ran off comes back. I, I guess, I guess all of this, I guess all of this is just a little bit rambly, especially if you're uh, new to my channel, you don't know what my comic book is about, but it'll all be revealed in future videos. I'm not, I don't feel like actually, uh, repeating myself right here right now rest assured i got this this is what i've been working on these are my thumbnails there's lots and lots more story i could explain but basically uh everything that i've had in the last couple of months um all of a sudden i'm just laying it out i'm halfway i figure i should i'm gonna well i don't know how quickly i can get up to 30 pages tonight but I'm definitely gonna have a go at it. So um, I'll keep you posted on that one. And then once I have that, then the next step is enlarging these thumbnails, adding the dialogue, getting the dialogue pinned down first this time rather than the art, uh, printing it off, making sure that um, it scales well, the fonts I use and like, you know, like the thing I do with the text. I just want to have that ready on the page and then scan that back in because then um, one of the problems I've been having looking at my art these last couple of days uh, at work, drawing the faces is that uh, I'm not happy with the art anymore. I think I can take it to the next level. Um, but the, the thing I notice now with the art um, that displeases me is 
is the not I don't want to say crudeness of it in some places I think because there's still a lot I, I quite enjoy but there's a lot of um, I just feel like the resolution is off um, it's too thick a lot of the lines are too thick and I feel like I want to make them thinner and a lot more like the detail I get in here but I feel like one of the problems I've been having is like my, my sense of proportion and scale back then like I just didn't have it I didn't have that sense yet and I feel like making the life in space comic book has really helped me um, get a better like clamp down on it a lot better you know it was the second time I had a go out making a comic book of course um, but also because I work traditional whereas the original phosphor issue zero was all digital so this time I'm gonna make a nice little mix um, but I'll, I'll make sure that once I go into Photoshop I have the text balloons and the text uh, all lined up so I have a real visual anchor to give me that sense of scale that's the plan so yeah time to get back to work you guys thanks so much for uh, sticking around and listening to me ramble on about a little comic book I'm making but be sure to check out the comic book we all got to make last year and that we are finally ready to uh, to present to you all life in space the comic book anthology can be found on Kickstarter you can follow the links down below And this week, I didn't so much show you um, the sights and sounds here in beautiful Barcelona, but last week, there's about a 45 minute video I put up from uh, my little journey all the way down south to the beautiful city of Alicante, where I checked out a, an exhibit of the Mayans from Guatemala, some other archeology, span and just the, uh, a little bit of beach, a little bit of sun, and plenty of good food. <laughs>